What's up guys, Tommy Bennett here, and today I'm gonna teach you guys how to be way more awesome at switch riding. Now in this video, I'm gonna be covering some basic skills slash drills that you guys can focus on, and then as you guys become more awesome, we're also gonna incorporate some more advanced techniques just to make sure that you guys are really getting better at switch. Now, it's, you might be asking me, dude, Tommy, why do we wanna ride switch? Let's say you wanna get into park riding. Riding switch is super important because you wanna be able to do a 180 and ride switch. Maybe you wanna go into a jump, a rail, or the half pipe switch and then come back and do another trick. But let's say that you're not even interested in park riding and I totally get it, a lot of you guys are not. What if you're traversing across the mountain and your legs are dying so much, they're so sore, but you gotta go pick up your kids or you gotta go meet somebody. Well, you just pop over switch, ride switch, and you can keep going. That means you can get a lot more out of your legs for the day. Uh, also, sometimes I find doing toe side turns uh, allows me to look uphill. So if I'm traversing across the run, it's actually safer because I can just look uphill so I don't get taken out by somebody. So those are just some very quick examples of why you wanna learn your switch riding. So let's get into this video. What you guys just saw there was my boy Bama. What's up everybody? He was ripping some switch riding. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna show you guys examples of the drill we're gonna be doing, but then Bama's gonna also attempt the same thing because I'm trying to improve his riding. But the beautiful thing for you guys is I'm gonna give him feedback specifically to what he did. I'm hoping that you guys can be able to relate to my trick or how I'm doing it or Bama and how I can make him more awesome. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna understand what switch is. So Bama, go ahead and strap both your feet in and we're gonna just start by understanding some basic mechanics of switch riding. All right, so when it comes to riding switch, the whole goal is to mirror what you're doing in your normal stance. So Bama, what I want you to do for me is just imagine you're riding in your regular direction. So as Bam is standing here, his lead shoulder, his hips, and his board, he's in a nice athletic stance with his eyes looking in that direction. Now when we're snowboarding, we're trying to do some awesome turns. You want about 60% of your weight on your lead foot. So let's just pressure just a little bit. What that allows us to do is something called knee steering. Knee steering essentially allows us to turn the front of our snowboard with our front foot versus the back foot. Just like you're in a car, right? You wanna use your, your little front wheels to turn. Now that we've established what the heck we're doing regular, now we're gonna mirror image that switch. So his eyes are looking where he's going. His shoulder is pointed at me. He's got about 60% of his weight on his lead foot. Close your shoulder just a little bit. There you go. Now that's pretty awesome. So a little bit ago, I just mentioned knee steering. So Bama has got about 60% of his weight on his front foot. Now, specifically when we're doing a toe side turn, what I'm looking for Bama to do is imagine that there's a bug that is squished between his shin and his boot. Well, the thing might bite you, so we gotta squish it and actually pro apply pressure to the front of our boot. So we're gonna see him do that again. Nice. So what Bama was doing right there was he was getting used to the feeling of pressure in the front of his boot and feeling his board start to turn just a little bit. Now that's gonna be for a toe side edge. Remember that, if you're at home, go practice that. Strap it in your board right now and practice squishing just the front of your boot on your lead foot. That's a big deal. With heel side, what you wanna do is get back in that athletic stance and you're going to rotate your knee. Specifically, you're gonna rotate your femur and you're gonna open your knee or open your femur as if it's a door just like this. Essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your knee and you're gonna try to hit my hand. Nice! Notice how he rotated. Practice that as well at home, is opening your knee. When 60% of your weight is on your front foot, it's gonna make that weight easier. So practice those two things. The next thing we're gonna get into, exercise number two, is doing a J turn and actually implementing this heel side and toe side knee steering technique. All right guys, the next thing we're gonna dive into is something called the J-turn. Essentially what I'm gonna have Bama do is point his board straight down the fall line and then make a turn to a complete stop using this, the knee technique. Now, if this is the first time you've ever rode switch, 
Don't go on something super steep. Find a mellow terrain that allows you to point your board down the fall line without picking up a lot of speed. For Bama here, I'm gonna have him count to about two or three seconds with this board pointing down the fall line. He's gonna pick up a little bit of speed then he's gonna come to a stop. Now it's up to you guys. You can start with the toe side or you can start with the heel side, but we're gonna start with toe side today specifically so we can watch out for people. Whenever you're ready, All right. go for it. Okay. A little bit of feedback for Bama is that he has his pressure pretty even between both his feet. And I can see that he's not getting as effective as a turn as it could be. I wanna see his board essentially go straight down the fall line and turn his board sideways without just drifting across the run. So we're gonna try that again. Make sure 60% of your weight is on that lead foot. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Do you feel how it's pretty even? Yeah, I feel super even. No, I can put more, definitely put more pressure uh, on my front foot. All righty, let's see it. So that is the toe side turn using knee strings. So make sure you have 60% of weight on your front foot and really feel that your board is turning and pivoting under the front foot. Now let's go do heel side. Remember, straight down the fall line as long as you're comfortable and then you're gonna open the door. So you're gonna take your femur and your knee and you're gonna open it to start that turn. You ready? You! Let's go. All right, Bama, whenever you're ready. Right. ready. Switch, bend your knees. Whoa! That was quick. That's what we want. More out of your front foot versus your back foot just swinging. Open that knee. There you go. Couple more. Okay. Now, we're gonna go one heel, one toe, one heel, one toe. So what was actually pretty magical right there is once you've practiced your toe side turn a couple times, your heel side turn a couple times, well then you kind of trick yourself to go, hey, I'm gonna do one toe side and then I'm gonna go one heel side, one toe side. You start to link the S turn. If you guys are looking for more of a beginner turn video, it's gonna talk you through specifically how to link them, but I wanna dive into some other exercises. So if you're looking for more in depth, check out that video. Now I got a question. With that knee steering, what did you notice? Uh, I noticed putting my weight more on my front foot and opening up my knee and closing it to which direction uh, I was trying to go in helped me out a lot. Does it make the turns faster or slower to turn? Uh, it definitely makes the turns faster if you initiate that knee and get that weight out over extended. Some applications for being able to turn fast is steeper terrain, moguls, tr uh, riding trees, because if you're able to turn faster, you can make short radius turns, which allows you to manage your speed. Now, as earlier, we talked about pointing our board down the fall line. The longer we point our board down the fall line, the faster we go. So if we can turn faster, we minimize how long we point our board, thus, managing our speed better. So that's the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this same thing into steeper terrain to see if he can ride steeper terrain. All right guys, so we're here at a steep blue, but depending on where you're from, this may be considered a black at your ski area. So we're gonna have Bama do some short radius skidded turns. The goal for Bama is to minimize his time down the fall line with his nose and stay in control. So he's gonna make a nice smooth toe side turn, slow down, heel side turn, slow down, slow down, slow down. But I don't want him just to be side slipping. This boy's gotta be doing some turns. You ready for the challenge? Ready for it, my G. All right, let's go! Let's go. No pressure? No pressure. Let's go.
So that's the first time I've seen Bama do short radius skidded turns on a steep face like that. A little bit of feedback for Bama is that on his hillside turn, he likes to go across the fall line and actually slow down. But then on his toe side edge, he doesn't completely go across the fall line, which means he doesn't slow down all the way or as much as he could. So he goes like, slow down, picks up speed, ah, goes back to his heel, slow down. So try to make him symmetrical so you can slow down this way, slow down this way, slow down this way, slow down this way. Don't forget to implement your knee steering technique specifically on the toe side edge. Toe side is the, traditionally the more scary turn. So make sure you're doing the knee steering for that. Also make sure that your butt is not sticking out and doing this on your toe side turn. It makes it way harder. You wanna keep your chest up and lean over that toe side edge. So what you guys saw there was more symmetrical turns. So every time I do a toe side turn, I'm slowing down. Heel side, I'm turning, slowing down almost equally, but it's just a good opportunity to focus on the turns and uh, keep it symmetrical and, and stay in control, right? Woo. So just watching Bama ride, one of the biggest things that I noticed is that he likes to stick his bum out and drop his chest. Now, some of us may say that's not an awesome thing, others says it is. What I'd like to see from Bama is be in a more vertical position with his chest, allowing him to utilize his knees a lot more. You wanna use your knees more because you're able to turn better as well as absorb the terrain, but for freestyle, you're able to pop and explode and do really cool tricks. In addition, having your chest more vertical, it does two things, it allows you to control your center of mass a little bit easier as well as allows you to look around. If I'm bent over down here, my point of view becomes very hindered, but if I'm here, I can look around so much better. I have a lot more versatility in my riding simply just by being upright, but using my knees. So that's what we're gonna do now. So this is the part of the advanced section of the video. We're gonna be doing switch ollies, nollies, and a couple other fun things to help his body positions as well as have fun and just get better at switch. All right, Bama. Right. No pressure, but let's see a flat ground ollie right here, right now. What? Do you guys notice the difference of how he is in a more strong position? And his balance was even directly over the board, so he's not falling forward or backwards. Yo, yo what up, dog? Yeah. Yo, you, the boys. <laughs> the real challenge, Bama, is to be able to do this pointing downhill, accumulating a little speed while keeping the mechanics. But please, please, please be aware of people, be smart, just find a nice little zone, find a corner, find wherever, and do that. Be safe, because we have a whole season ahead of us. One. Oh, let's go. One thing that I'm noticing that Bama likes to do is he brings his lead knee up first, right? That's what you wanna do with an ollie. But as soon as he brings it up, he's already pushing it back down and almost galloping on his snowboard. What I want you to do is bring your lead knee up, but keep it up as long as you can. That's, that's what I want you to do. Gosh, makes sense. Oh, way better. Way, that feels way, so way much better. better. Hey, do you feel a difference? I do. What difference do you feel? Uh, by leaving my lead knee up longer, I'm able to bring them both back down at the same time. Ooh, I yep. love it. The reason why I wanted Bama to do these switch ollies is because it teaches you how to be in a better position. If you keep falling, ask yourself why. Is my chest up? Is my shoulder open? Where am I at? The other thing is it starts to teach you how to land and absorb the terrain. Now, if you're going in the train park, going through moguls, you gotta be able to handle the pressures. So this is a good way to control handling pressure 
at your own pace. You can ollie as high as you can, or you can do a baby ollie. Totally cool, but it's starting to train your body and your mind to be in more control. Now, if you guys are looking for a nice little challenge other than a switch ollie, we're gonna try a switch nollie. Some of you guys might call it a fakie ollie. We're gonna try this switch and just try to get a little bit more diverse in our tricks. Now, Bama, I don't want you to go ham. I don't want you to go big. I want you to keep on the mechanics that we were just doing. Okay. You're gonna pop off your nose. You're bringing up your lead, your back leg first, building pressure on your nose, giving yourself a pop. But I only, I only want you to go about four inches, five, six inches high. Okay. But more importantly, bring both knees up and have the right mechanics before we start going ham. Okay, stop. Does that feel like a, a gallop? I don't know if you guys noticed this, but he's starting with about 80% of his weight on his front foot and then trying to pop there. Start neutral, start even, then lean forward and pressure the nose. Gotcha. So these are more versatility tasks. Yes, it'd be sick to be able to ollie. Yes, it'd be sick to be able to nollie and do all these things, but it's about getting you to move your bodies in different ways and constantly be able to adapt. Now, as you do a ollie and you land, can you stop? Well, that's obviously part of riding switch, be able to stop. Can you do an ollie and stop? Can you stop both on your toe side and heel side? So these are very good utility tricks. Now, you don't have to go 10 feet up in the air and try to do something gnarly. Start small. If you guys are not comfortable doing a ollie or nollie, totally do a tail press or a nose press to simulate the same thing, but reducing the consequences. So that's definitely something that we can do. Now, Bama has a little bit of work. He's gonna be practicing these a whole bunch this year. My biggest things for Bama is being able to keep his chest tall, his eyes up, and be able to absorb or pop and take off with both his knees, uh, being able to utilize his knees more. So that's a big thing. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Um, the progression is real. Uh, I would say that out of all this stuff though, the most important thing is time on the board. You gotta be out here as much as you can, uh, putting the time in to progress and to get that muscle memory locked in. But I back that 100%. The more you can practice, the more you can ride switch, the better it's gonna be. A lot of you guys ask, how do I improve my switch? Ride switch. Whether that's st spending a whole day riding switch, maybe it's just the top of the mountain, maybe it's just a turn a day, but whatever it is, you just gotta put the time in. So on that note, guys, Big shout out to Bama. Follow Bama on Instagram at The Healthy Snowboarder. He's doing a whole bunch of stuff for snowboard community about eating healthier, speeding up the recovery of injuries. He's got a bunch of good stuff. And DM him on Instagram if you have any questions about food. You! Everybody just stay stoked for the season. Make sure you're having fun. That's the most important part. And uh, get after it. You! Let's go. Love you, my dudes. We out!